Metro's North Carolina for a university, and when we won, it was like a dream come true to me. It's one of those feelings of kind of ecstasy, and you, know, you work so hard, and, and you don't even really know what you've done until maybe the next day, and, and even now, you get goosebumps or chill bumps thinking about it. It's a feeling that you, you can't even really explain. I mean, it's to the point that you, you die and went to heaven. Only to blue heaven as the banner hangs high atop the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And the number one national ranking still very much in hand for the top-ranked defending champion Tar Heels of North Carolina as they get set to open play against the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler with Dick Vitale. It's another season of college hoops already on ESPN, Dick. And tonight, the number one team in the country opens up against a very good team. Last year, Western Kentucky won 26. They won the Sun Belt Conference Tournament, went to the NCAA, and made a lot of noise there. You know, Brad, you don't go out and beat teams like Memphis State, Florida State. They beat Louisville in a regular season on the road, and you're not going to be intimidated. We watch them practice. Western Kentucky has some great athletes. They have runners. They have jumpers. Watch particularly for a kid by the name of Chris Robinson. He has star talent. This Western Kentucky team is going to be outstanding as the season progresses. The problem for a team like North Carolina is that they're North Carolina to the fact of the national champions it's like running with the bulls in a red sweatsuit you know everybody wants a piece of you well you know everybody wants a piece of them but when you look at north carolina they have all the elements that coaches dream of number one they got one of the premier baselines in america headed by the all-american eric montross in the lane they have one of the premier backcourts in america with phelps and williams they have one of the premier benches in america with stackhouse and with wallace and one of the premier coaches in dean smith that all spells trouble baby for all the position another year brad i can't wait he's ready so are we how do you get ready for the number one team in the country in the opening game let's go in the western kentucky locker room and find out this is it. hard work hard work we'll be playing hard and hustle good things will happen yeah. let's go. Let's go. one two three hard work. Let's go. Yeah. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lincoln Mercury and the complete line of Lincoln luxury automobiles. Lincoln, what a luxury car should be. And by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. A full house in the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. NIT first round action. And let's take a look at our McDonald's starting lineups first. For Western Kentucky's Hilltoppers, they expect a lot of rebounding and leadership out of the only senior on the starting five, Cephas Bunton, with Robinson Hall, Freilix, and Horn. And Ralph Willard has done a brilliant job in his three seasons at Western Kentucky. For North Carolina, here's how they look. Derek Phelps, maybe the best defensive guard in the country, with Williams, Montross, Reese, and Salvadori, four starters back from the national championship squad for Dean Smith, now in his 33rd season, second winningest all-time coach in college basketball history. First game, a new year, and we're underway. Man-to-man -man defense immediately look for them to trap. Western Kentucky out of their man. Phelps leaves it for Reese, who knifes in and scores. Nice cut by Brian Reese. Had an ankle injury when practice started, but he's okay. Look at his full court pressure using Salvadori up on top. I agree with you, Brad. I love Phelps defensively. You've got to get the ball away from him. And he's all over Freilix, but a little bit too all over Freilix as Eric Phelps picks up the first foul of the ball game. You know, Freilix is in really a tough position. He's replacing Mark Bell. He was the catalyst who made this team go when they beat Seton Hall. I think we're going to see Jeff Rogers at that point guard position a lot. A junior college player who really can flat out score. He's a jet. Fresh 35 on the shot clock, which is new here in 93. 35 second shot clock. Nice backdoor cut. Darren Horn, great two-man basketball, quick hitter. And the first turnover of the game. That's one of the keys. They have to force Carolina to turnovers. Horn didn't get the roll. 
Salvadori has it stripped, but he's fouled by Chris Robinson. You know, last year, Western Kentucky, they forced 21 turnovers a game. Ralph Willard plays a lot of the same similarities in his system as Rick Pitino, who he worked under when he was with the New York Knickerbockers. And I tell you, coming out here tonight, they were not intimidated. They are as loose as a front wheel with only two lug nuts. I mean, they're ready to play. I like that line already early in the year. I like that, Black. 2-1-2. Two two. Williams has it blocked by Button. You know, if you look at North Carolina, they have two areas which I think really stops them from being what I call invincible. Number one, perimeter shooting. I don't believe they're an outstanding perimeter shooting team other than Donald Williams. Number two, lack of tremendous speed. They're not super quick with Montrose and Salvadori on the floor. Two seven-footers, and one of them out on top right now for Carolina. Tie game at two. And some nice pressure on defense by the Hilltop. They really take pride in their defense. Look at this. He's in a double-team situation. Great job down low by Robinson, and uh, Reese had to bounce it off his leg. What an intense competitor Ralph Willard is on that sideline. Montross on the inbound. It's counted in there. I'll tell you, you talk about power, baby. Once they get the ball in the lane, they like that play where they just flip the ball up into the three-second area to one of their Giants. It's a high percentage shot. He's led the Tar Heels in field goal percentage three years in a row. You've got to keep the ball away from Phelps. He really applies relentless pressure. Watch the pressure on the basketball right here. Tenacious. Give credit to Fralix, who drove around on the score. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he earned that deuce. North Carolina try to go to the motion in a little high low. Salvadori has it swiped and it's a breakaway. Darius Hall. Hall with the jam from out of Detroit. The Motor City. The Motor City mash. Played at Northwestern High School in Detroit. And well, the Hilltoppers with a two-point lead. Notice how they go to full court pressure immediately after a conversion. There's that entry. They're going to double up inside every time he touches the ball. Great look. It's another thing that Montross does so well is pass the ball, and he does to Salvadori, and we're tied at six. Great look by Montross. Tremendous awareness once he's double-teamed into the lane. A oh, good skip pass for the three. Rattles out on Robinson. Carolina running the ball up the sideline in their transition game. Great lead for Reese from Williams. Ryan Reeves runs to the box. They like to bring the ball up the sideline, and then they usually have a secondary phase to their break as well. 8-6, Star Heels early. Three minutes in here from Chapel Hill. I'll tell you one thing. These kids are playing with a lot of intensity and a lot of confidence west of Kentucky. Checking in for the Tar Heels. And Rasheed Wallace will check in for North Carolina. Western Kentucky also goes to its bench. There's the big fella, one of the freshmen. Number five, Special. Rashid Wallace. Special. We watched him in practice. This kid is special. Here comes another special one who will back up Phelps at the point, and that's Jeff McInnes. Matchups are really tough when you have that kind of size in a way in terms of playing man-to-man -man pressure. Look at that link. Up Leaping by over. Daniel Macklin. Remember that name, Rudy Macklin's nephew. Macklin played on the great LSU team. This kid, number 30, Daniel Macklin's a tremendous jumper. He turned down Louisville and Indiana to go to Western Kentucky. And here comes Jerry Stackhouse, and that'll bring the house down. Here's another look at Macklin. There's the little jumper. Now Macklin's coming from the weak side, number 30. He's got great legs, tremendous bounce. He tips it in. You may have heard the big roar. That's when number 42 checked in. It's their excitement. Wallace, a little too hard. Nice pass by Stackhouse, throwing the ball over the top of the zone and then reversing it and dumping it down to Labria and to Wallace's hands. The button will inbound, and again, full court pressure from North Carolina. What makes Wallace so special is he's so agile and mobile for a guy 6'11". Here's Jeff Rogers, the junior college player that Dick talked about earlier. 
McGinnis picks up the foul. Hey, can he score, Brad? How are these numbers? He had 41 against the Junior College National Champ, and he played against Three Rivers, had 36 on Vincennes, one of the finalists in Junior College, and he had 35 on Butler out of Kansas in the Junior College ranks. He can flat out score, but he's having a little tough time adjusting to their system. And miss by Horn, rebound lost, and another foul picked up underneath. Button's got great legs. He really went after that offensive board, number 34, but then he fouled. First personal foul, number 34, Cephas Button. Button with his first 13 foul on the Hilltoppers with 16.09 to go first half in a tie game at eight apiece. Multiple defenses, they constantly change. Another nice pass from Montross, who got it back from Calabria. McKinnis stopped. I thought I was going to say glass, but he just kind of rattled it in there. You know, he didn't get the acclaim as the big two, Stockhouse and Wallace, but he's got outstanding ability, and he's going to be a major factor as a third guard here at North Carolina. Wallace with a steal. And there they go. Uh-oh. They were ready to bring the house down. Had he made that catch in transition, this place would have exploded with a little jam by Jerry Stackhouse. Here's the drive. Now we're going to watch Stackhouse get out in transition. Here's the outlet. The first phase of the running game. Look at Wallace running, number 30, trailing. There's Stackhouse. Tough play to make. He gets fouled on a play. Went to Oak Hill. Played with McGinnis. They were undefeated down at Virginia Prep School. McDonald's All-American. And about to try his first free throw in a North Carolina uniform. Rated very high by Bob Gibbons, who rates all the high school players with the Bob Gibbons, Gibbons report. In fact, Wallace and Stackhouse and McGinnis were three of the top 15 in America. 15-38 to go. First half, Dean Smith's Tar Heels out to a four-point lead. Right there, we're going to enter the ball into Mr. Montrose. He's going to get the ball down in the post. Freeze it right here. Once the double team comes, he'll look opposite right here for a layup. Watch it right here. Montrose is going to field the double team, and there's Salvadori. He says, give me the rock, baby, and it's just like eating lasagna. Salvadori <laughs> likes his lasagna. 12-8, Carolina with the lead. Rodgers leaves it. Tough shot. Button can't get it, and Montrose will clear it ahead to McGinnis. Look at the pass. Wallace handles it and scores. I'll tell you one thing, Brad. It's going to be very difficult to keep Wallace and Stackhouse on the sideline. They got things you cannot teach. Great hands and great mobility. Watch them get in transition. I love watching Stackhouse fill the lane. Robinson was inside. Button got close and scored his first basket. He was Button last year would have been probably a starter, but he broke his wrist early in the year and came on strong toward the end of the season. Playing tonight with a chip bone in his ankle. He was sort of a question mark here early in the season, but he is out there and has been since the start and just came up with a steal. Poor job by Carolina recognizing the changes defensively. Nice pass down court to Robinson, who missed the shot but drew the foul. And let me tell you something. Ralph Willard's team is going to be special before this year is over. He has a number of athletes that First can play. He's got tremendous talent in that he's got guys that are interchangeable. They can play a lot of parts on the floor. And I really believe Western Kentucky will be the kings of the Sun Belt Conference. I know New Orleans is good, but I like this basketball team. And Coach Willard goes to his bench again. Darius Hall checks back in, as does Mike Fralix, also point guard. This is Chris Robinson, the sophomore from Macon, Georgia. Played at Southwest High School in Macon, Georgia. Producer of a lot of great players, Norm Nixon, Jeff Malone, now with the Utah Star, Utah Jazz. They all, also, Terry Fear played at Georgia. A lot of players have come out of that Southwest Macon High School. Eric Manuel. Tough rebound, and a great move underneath by Darius Hall. I'll tell you, they got athletes, bro. They got jumpers. When we talk about an athlete, we're talking about a runner and a jumper. And Carolina picks up its fourth turnover as Williams can't handle a down court pass. Fourteen, thirteen, North Carolina, Western Kentucky, not intimidated at all by the national champion so far. Now, when you go overtime with Florida State and you beat Louisville and beat Memphis State, you know you can play with the big boys. 
Wallace doubled and shoots over it. Sensational. That's all you simply can say. Sensational. One of those players that comes right out of high school and has all the tools. Rodgers will pull up. And he's 0 for 2 from the field. That's how he scored in junior college. He was a machine. This isn't junior college. It's the big leagues. <laughs> it's the big leagues. They like to dump it inside. Got a little mismatch. Could have given it to him. Eric Phelps draws a foul. Yo, yo. Some new rules here in 93 that we'll look at as we go. We mentioned one already, the 35-second shot clock, and still of the 45 of past years. The rich get richer, Brad. All the rules seem to always favor the better teams. For example, reducing the shot clock to 35 seconds, you favor teams that have talent because the more possessions in a game, the better opportunity they have to win. And it takes away chances for the Princeton and those people to spring up since, and I don't like it. I want to give the little guy a chance as well. Salvadori. And he pushed off. On Darius Hall, Salvador picks up his first five. He's a great story. You know, he came here out of Pennsylvania, was not heavily recruited. He redshirted his freshman year, and now he's earned the chance to be a starter. He's really increased his weight, his strength. They're going to call it a traveling violation, not a foul on Salvador. Stand corrected. Montrose back in. I thought Montrose had his coming out party as a sophomore, but he had that great performance against Duke when Duke was undefeated, and he had blood all over his face. And I thought from that moment on, he finally arrived as a big-time player. Preseason All-American choice at that pivot spot. Here's a rule changes for 93 that we were talking about. Shot clock reduced, as we said, 45 to 35, speed up the game. Time clock stopped after field goals in the final minute, so coaches don't call those timeouts when they're down by 35. And the elimination of the five-second count is the one I don't like because it's going to be boring with players holding on to the ball. Give it back to Stackhouse. Should have given go right there. Reese does finally give it back. Stackhouse first field goal. He's got four, and Carolina leads by five. What great basketball instincts. Just has that tremendous ability to get up and down the floor as well. Rodgers working against Phelps, and he's lucky he got fouled because he would have been called for traveling. You got to... Watch Jerry Stackhouse run the court, number 42. Very difficult to play a guy that's very active. He runs a little curl move right over Montrose, gets himself on a baseline, squares his body, kicks it on the glass, and converts it. Rogers goes out, and Darren Horn checks back in. For the Hilltoppers, who trail 18-13. Freilich's outside, can't get the three. They like to shoot the three. They average about 18 threes a game last year. They like to drive and kick it out. Spot up. Robinson's been quiet. He's been sensational during their preseason workouts. Freilich's 0 for 2 from out there on that possession. Carolina with some numbers. Williams has not shot much yet. Montross outside. And Reese. And it blocked. Montross follows. Offensive blast. They're going to play with the ball up on a glass. And there's Montross with the big body with the conversion. Carolina stretches it out to seven. All alone. Horn. They've got to start hitting the outside shot, and they can't find it right now. Darren Horn is their experienced player. Started last year. Had some big games. He's got to knock down that open shot. And Darius First Hall picks up the foul. On Darius Hall. You know, you look at North Carolina, they lose George Lynch, who was their leader, an inspirational guy, a tremendous offensive rebounder. But I really believe they'll make up for his loss in physical skills with Stackhouse and Wallace. The question is, they have to have a guy step forward as a big-time leader. A whistle and a foul on Horn as Phelps brings it down court. So right now, Western Kentucky, after staying close and having the game tied up three times, they find themselves down by seven with 12 minutes to go in the first half. We've got to be careful of that spurt. Carolina is capable of running one of those spurts on the eight zip and blowing it open. 
I'll tell you, Ralph Willard, to me, when you talk about a guy that's resurrected a program that was really struggling, you know, you can relate a little bit with Mike Jarvis and the job he's done at George Washington, or Perry Clark down at Tulane. Very similar here at Western Kentucky. Though he doesn't get that kind of visibility other than the postseason where he got the notoriety in the NCAA tournament. 61 wins in three years. Question is, can they keep him at Western Kentucky? That's going to be the big question. This guy's got star talent all over him. Derek Phelps, not a great free throw shooter last year, but he hit his first two of 93. And he puts North Carolina up by nine with 12 minutes left in the first half. We're going to take a look now, Brad, watching Jerry Stackhouse right here kick the ball and then fill the lane and then convert. We're going to watch him in transition. Unbelievable move for a freshman. Right here, freeze it. Now right here, watch how he uses Montross here to curl into this area, and they'll bring the ball over and dump it in. It's unbelievable how they'll bring the ball into him. Great basketball there. instincts, and he just came up with a steal. But there's Mr. Superstar of the future, Jerry Stackhouse. He's going to be awesome. Up 11. The fans up on their feet. And McGinnis up too close on Horn will pick up the foul. Second personal foul on Jeff McGinnis. We're going to watch Stackhouse. There's the anticipation. Gets in the lane. And now he's going to finalize the great legs, the bounce off the floor, up, up, and away. I was going to show you the replay on the on the telestrator. We had a little breakdown here. How he moves so well with the presses me without the ball. Most young kids want to have the ball in their hands. But Brad, what impresses me, he moves exceptionally well without the ball. In his first college game and leading all scorers right now. Stackhouse with six. The lead is 11 with 11.30 left first half. Brad Nestler and Dick Vitale at the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill. There's a double team. Carolina will not come up with it. Look at that double team. Look at the size. Seven feet and he had 6'11". Freelich finally got it out of there. You know, it's easy to say you got to bring the ball diagonally, but it's very difficult to see over those trees. Off the glass is Derek Flowers just into the lineup. Got to make that open shot. Flowers kicks it off the glass. Backhouse saves. And Flowers trying to come up with a loose ball. Does. But it'll be Carolina ball. He's out of bounds. Don't forget, we've got more college basketball coming up tonight. First round NIT action. Jason Kidd and the Golden Bears of sixth-ranked California take on Santa Clara. That's at midnight from San Jose Arena right here on ESPN. So our college hoops will not end in North Carolina. We'll take it west for you a little bit later on tonight. Jason Kidd is the best point guard in America. Santa Clara, they had that unbelievable win in the first round when they said bye-bye to Arizona in the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Brian Reese will bring it in. Wallace and Montross inside, and McGinnis and Calabria outside. That's the lineup for North Carolina. Zoning. Calabria can shoot the ball from out. There's the entry, looking opposite. Triple team blocked by Bunton. Bunton's got the great legs. Here's the guy that's the key to this team, number 10, Rodgers. He has to give them what Mark Bell gave him last year, leadership, penetration ability. He's got to take smarter shots than the first two he's taken tonight. Though. Well, big adjustment coming out of junior college, played at this level. Turn the ball over. Carry the basketball. He's really struggling. He seems to be the only one a little bit rattled by what's going on so far. Well, he went in to see Coach Willard, and he said to Coach, he says, Coach, I'm really like awed with all the things we have to learn to play at this level. At a junior college level, the guys have a little bit more in terms of transition. Right here, a little bit more structure. North Carolina turns it over for the sixth time. You may see a lot of that in this preseason NIT. Remember, practice has only been going on for about, what, 17 days? Exactly. Very difficult. Certainly, the junior college coaches do an outstanding job, but the bottom line is you don't have the quality of players that you feature. You have to face here at this kind of a level. Midway point, first half. And an illegal block down low on Western Kentucky. 
Derek Flowers. Gene Manji with the call. Three Atlantic 10 officials. The Atlantic 10 is going to be very good this year. Temple, I love what John Chaney has. Aaron McKee, one of the best unknown players in the nation in terms of a guy that's got a lot of talent. Derek Flowers. In fact, he played in high school at the same high school as Wallace and Bert Simon Gratz down there under Bill Ellerby, who does an outstanding job. Flowers sits Darius Hall back in. The coaches are really trying to find out now, Brad, a combination. I like a combination I see already with North Carolina. Are you going to save that or are you going to let us know what it is? I like that combination with Wallace and Stackhouse and Montrose across that front. Wallace rattles one off the front. That's an area they've been working with him in the gym, trying to improve his free throw shooting. Rodgers almost carried that ball again. He's struggling. He's got to come out of the game. He really has to sit for a moment or two, find himself. I think Willard will go to the bench and get him out. And there it is. Mr. Frelick is coming in. Guinness trying to get it to Wallace. Comes right back to him, and he'll reset it. Another highly touted freshman at the point for Carolina. Great spin move and buries it. Jeff Mullins, who I really respect at North Carolina Charlotte, said, Dick, you're going to like Jeff McGinnis, who played his high school basketball in Charlotte before he moved on to go to o Oak Hill in Virginia. Again, North Carolina by 11. Very impressive when you look at that baseline and you see a Montrose and a Wallace. Macklin, great drive. Daniel Macklin is a special player. He's got tremendous quickness, and he's going to be a very key player with Western Kentucky in the future. Got to get back on transition, though. Carolina can run with guys like Reese, who has six. Here's Horn, and now it's end-to-end. -end. He must have heard you, Brad. He said, we can run, too. He said the Hilltoppers can blitz it up the floor. Nine-point North Carolina lead. Calabria thought about a jumper. Reese feeds to Wallace. Missed the jam. He likes to jam a lot. He's very similar, not that he's a similar player, but very similar to Chris Weber. He used to catch the ball and just jam it. They're going to reverse the ball. There's the unselfish play. Reese dumps it down. Up he goes. Challenges Button. Hits the back of the rim. Wallace goes to the sideline. Montrose picked up the foul, trying to get the rebound off that miss by Wallace. So we walk it to the other end. And Darius Hall will go to the free throw line. Wallace, 6 7 junior, out of Detroit. Last year, 9.4 a game for the junior. Tallest player on the team at 6 7. And that's tough when you're going against Montrose at 7 foot. Salvadori bigger than that, and Wallace about 6'11". Miss Phelps, he knows his role, penetrate, bring the ball up the floor, play on the defensive end, a little bit out of control right there. Dean Smith said he expected turnovers this early in the season, and so far Carolina has got more than Western Kentucky. That's seven against the Tar Heels. We still have eight and a half to play first half. Well, the style of game is going to force turnovers, the trapping defenses, the quick pace of the game, and this early in the season. Horn's going to slow it down, guarded by Calabria. Ball loose on the baseline. And off Western Kentucky. There's Dean Smith, 774 wins, is 101 away from Adolph Rupp's 875. The rate he goes, look at three years, possibly a 33 or four a year. Hello! Guys like Montross, it uh, helps. Stackhouse with a pass, Montross with a finish, and Montross with six. I'll tell you one thing, Stackhouse and McGinnis and Wallace in their early reviews right here tonight have come up really well. They sure don't look like freshmen. They played so many games in their high school careers, they're not freshmen. They play all summer in all kinds of competitions. Salvadori picks up the foul. Salvadori's father played for Frank McGuire at South Carolina. And it was Frank McGuire who's certainly uh, very close to Dean Smith, helped to advise him to go to North Carolina. It's Donald Williams, who has yet to score MVP of the Final Four last year, and a guy that when he gets in his groove can really fill it up. Calabria will sit. So it's Williams, Phelps, Salvadori, Stackhouse, and Montross. And this is a different five again. We've seen several combinations. And Sifas Button at the free throw line, the only senior starter on this team. One and one. Kid, when Macklin gets a lot of experience, he's going to get a lot of playing time. 
He was a player from out of Louisville that everybody wanted on a high school level and decided to go. It was a great coup for Ralph Willard. Chris Robinson comes back in for Darren Horn. Robinson comes out in and Horn goes out. Robinson's been really quiet and they've been singing his praises. He's been brilliant in the preseason workouts. We got a scouting report from a former coach here who coached from 71 to 78. Now the interim athletic director, Jim Richards, who, by the way, should be the athletic director. This guy was, I mean, he was selling his school to us like you couldn't believe. So proud of his school. Give him the job as AD. His school's down nine with 7.45 to go in the half. 7.46 in the half, Carolina by nine. Brad, we're going to take a look at a little triangle right here by Carolina offensively. There's a look at their triangle, and once we see them enter the ball to Stackhouse on a baseline, he knows how to finalize. The ball goes to Stackhouse. Now watch him drive along the baseline. Freeze it! Now right here, he knows he's going to get attention, and he's going to be looking at Montrose, who's going to release for the layup. Now watch the baseline. There's the little dump down. Excellent two-man play along the baseline. They really are so selfish. They always make that extra pass. And that's the reason they're shooting 68% right now in the first half for 45 for the Hilltoppers. Williams, that's his first basket. Just a matter of time. Great reversal against the double team. Williams spots up. He is the one guy that can shoot the ball from the perimeter at North Carolina. And Western Kentucky throws it away. You cannot have a lot of turnovers against the team as good as North Carolina. This is a danger single time time right now, now Brad. This is danger time. You want to go in single digits at halftime. You don't want to be down 15 to 20. And it can happen here. Carolina has had, for the most part, an 11-point lead for the better part of the last five minutes. I'd get the ball inside. I'd rotate Montrose to the box. Salvadori, left hand, had it blocked, goaltending. Well, they go to high-low, and they slip Salvadori in here. Reminiscent in 1986. Remember the big tandem of the two big fellas, Martin and Doherty? Mm -hmm. But they had Warren Martin, and they had Brad Doherty, both about 6'11", high-low, and that's what they have here now with Salvadori and with Montrose. Biggest cushion of the night for North Carolina. They lead by 13. Oh. Look out. There's the double team. Williams with the swipe and the bucket. Donald Williams, hello. You can't turn your back on a double team. Once you spin and turn your back, it's over. They get a T.O., baby. They get a T.O. 6.53 remaining first half. And Western Kentucky's got to talk it over. As soon as you spin like that, Brad, it's over. The help from the other side, layup Jam City. North Carolina by 15 with 6.53 remaining in the first half. North Carolina playing their face guarding defense. Wolf work pressure. Overplay. Almost came up with another steal. Brian Reese. Nice job defensively. Competition and practice is so keen at North Carolina because the talent level. Well, Brian Reese knows if I don't come to play, Jerry Stackhouse has got my position. Frelix will put it up. That's Good his first basket. Oh, oh, I, that's his second basket. Four points for Frelix. Nice look by Frelix. There's the high-low looking to post up Montrose down in the box. This is what Reese does so well. Good hustle by the Hilltoppers, but it'll still be North Carolina ball. Brian Reese loves to drive that baseline. His former high school teammate, Adrian Autry, is going to be a key player this year up in Syracuse. If he has a consistently big-time year, Syracuse can be smiling. Rashid Wallace back in. Salvadori will sit. So it's Wallace, Montross, Williams, Reese, and Phelps. See, Montrose is a true low post center. Wallace is a guy that can play the four or the five, meaning the power forward slot or the post position inside. Montrose had it stripped by Button. He got him before he took the ball up. Out of his waist level. 13-point North Carolina lead with just over six minutes to go first half. And we're going to have a foul, I believe, on Robinson as he got tangled up with Reese. Yeah, Robinson trying to push off to get free for the ball. He's a little frustrated right now. He's not able to get the ball where he wants. Robinson is second. 
So we'll walk it down to the free throw line on the other end for Brian Reese. They're going to mature quickly to Western Kentucky. In a month of December, they got dates. You ready for those? With Louisville and a possible date with Indiana at Indiana if they can beat Princeton in the first round of an Indiana Classic because Indiana most likely will get by Texas Christian. I've already given them the W over there. <laughs> Knight saying, well, you're going to give us a W. I'm trying to get my kids ready to fly. Reese with a miss. Chance to cut the lead back to 11 with six minutes to go, first half. I love the way. Look at Phelps digging. All you young kids, watch him play defense. Robinson outside. They still cannot find it. Other than in the lane, basically all the scorings come within 12 feet of the basket. Now, obviously, Eric Montross will be a high draft choice because he's a rare breed with that size. But he's going to have to be drafted by the right team to utilize his kind of talent. Reese up. But also drew the foul. Mutt will go up there with you, that's for sure. Oh, he's got great legs, tremendous bounce off the floor. He's very explosive. Western Kentucky's got a lot of tradition. The start of EA Diddle, who won over 750 games in his career. Got inducted in the Hall of Fame in 1971. Passed away in 1970. I have a problem with that. I, I have a problem with always waiting to put people in the Hall of Fame. It's too late rather than putting them in so they can enjoy that moment. Rodgers checks back in for Western Kentucky, and Fralix will sit. Brian Reese at the free throw line. Montross gets a breather for North Carolina. Brian Reese has missed his last two free throws. Win that national championship. Last time they won it was 1982. Here's a little trivia for you. 1982, they win the national championship. You know what their record was in 82 and 83 when they had guys by the name of Michael, Sam Perkins? They lost their first two games to St. John's in Missouri after winning the national title. And they were 3-3 three and three after the first six games. Lost to Tulsa to go to 3-3 three and three and drop out of the top 20. And then went on a string of 14 straight and all of a sudden found themselves number one in the country again by February. They got blown out in the NCAA by Fleming and Company of Georgia. A blow. That's a rebound. He's a man. Bad pass right there. Rodgers finally scores. That's his first basket. Cuts the lead to 12. 37-25 North Carolina. There's the double team. They're allowing them to reverse the middle to the trail man. The Hilltoppers would like to pressure you all the way down court. They quite frankly have not made enough shots to pick up that full court pressure. Carolina running a little horizontal screen along the boxes inside. Salvadori. Stackhouse, great weak side rebound. How do you keep him on a bench? You tell me. You look at his legs. You look at his ability. Star all over him. Certain players have presence. Certain players have star on their chest. And guys like Stackhouse and Wallace have that on their chest. Just like the kids when they entered Michigan, the Webbers and the Howards. Williams. College football coming up this Saturday. We'll get things going. The Southeastern Conference has seventh-ranked Tennessee, led by Heath Shuler, the great quarterback, takes on Bill Curry's Kentucky Wildcats, who are Peach Bowl bound. That's at 4 o'clock. And then in the ACC, number two, Florida State, Charlie Ward, the leading candidate for the Heisman, takes on the Wolfpack at North Carolina State, 7.30 Eastern time. That's our college football Saturday action coming up this weekend. And Charlie Ward a lock. He deserves the Heisman Trophy. Don't get me started in football. they got to have a system like in basketball. Have no, a I true have a hard time slowing you down in basketball. Don't get started with football. <laughs> uh, my bosses told me they don't want me to talk football. They said, talk basketball. But I promise I will not say I know that you were Florida in the game State, last week. I'll promise I will not say that they should not have to play Notre Dame again. I'm not a mathematical genius, but you go, why should you have to go 2-0 and all and then 1-1? One but I will not say nothing about football. It could be a national chance. 39. Uh-oh. 36 thought was there, but Carolina picks up its 10th turnover. And you can hear the oohs in the crowd waiting for one of those to go right. Excitement all over them. I'll tell you, they have excitement all over them, the new kids. Now it's going to be the only new kids we're going to see on a college scene this year. Antonio Winfield is going to be special with Cincinnati, and certainly Charlie O'Bannon down at UCLA, Darnell Robinson at Arkansas. Here's all three freshmen at once. Wallace, well, I was just going to say Wallace, Stackhouse, and McGinnis, but now Wallace 
McGinnis will go out and Phelps will come back in. For the first time, we're going to see all three in any kind of minutes together, but a couple of them sit down now. You know, Michigan now, that has the fabulous score. We'll see them against a good Tulane team, Gerald Honeycutt, a guy you want to remember that name for Tulane, a freshman. But the fabulous score, I think if there's a problem with Michigan, it's going to be depth and size. And a guy they're going to miss, we know they'll miss rubber, right. but it's Eric Wiley, a guy that gave them great play off the bench down there at Michigan. We'll see that game December 1st. This is the opener of the 16-team preseason NIT tourney. Rodgers misses both free throws. Blown opportunities by Western Kentucky. They've caused a lot of turnovers, but they don't have any points off them. Great look by Stackhouse to Reese. Did you see that look? The no-look pass. Jerry Stackhouse. Tremendous no-look pass. A lead back to 15 with 4.15 left in the half. And a turnover. Charge. Stackhouse takes the charge. Robinson. Watch the look right here. Here's the drive by Stackhouse. And there's the dump down to Reese. Nice catch. Look at the way he squares his body to get the defensive player on his back. Jerry Stackhouse. He is poured into that body. 41-26 with just over four minutes. Remaining first half. You know, Pat Sullivan, a key player last year, is averaging about 16 minutes a game, as we said. He's red-shirted, and I really think as we look at Pat Sullivan, by red-shirting Sullivan to get him ready for next season, it's freed up some minutes for Stackhouse and Wallace this year. Everybody comes out a winner in that deal. Okay, he's going on for his Masters. Fifth-year player, Dean Smith. 875 is a magical number. What a teacher. We watched practice yesterday, you and I, and we were amazed how he just took control and was teaching and loves to teach. He loves to be on that floor. Western Kentucky struggling from the free throw line. Button misses. There's the sensational freshman who's off to a great start tonight. Eight points, a couple of unbelievable assists, and had a rebound where he was way up over the box. Button got the second. Twenty-one, twenty-seven. Reese, great cross-court pass. Calabria is wide open. Rattled out on it. Perfect execution and how to throw the ball over the top of the defense, especially when facing trapping defenses. Ryan Reese picks up his second foul and will walk it back the other way. Here's the field for the preseason NIT. As we told you, 16 teams, six of them in the top 25. We've got this one, and winner of this one meets the Butler Cincinnati winner on Friday night. UMass Cleveland State, Townsend State, and St. John's in the other half of the bracket with the NIT champions from Minnesota, ranked 10th in the country, defending postseason NIT champions against Rice, California, and Kansas, both in the top 10 and also in the field. Watch Minnesota. they got everybody back. Bashan Leonard is a special player. What's the Jeff Haskins. You talk about special players. When you think of Western Kentucky, Jim McDaniel jumps to you. What a great player he was in 71 when he went to the Final Four. But then they also had a guy by the name of Clem Haskins. He was absolutely super. He nods his head, so that's okay. Now he's going to go talk to Ralph Willard. So we got a little problem. Ralph right now says, I got my own problems. He said, look, you're telling me that. I got my own I'm problems. I'm down here. He said, I'm looking at the scoreboard. Look at Ralph right there. Well, I'll tell you one thing. What a great motivator. Watching him in practice. I thought I was watching Rick yeah. yeah. I was hearing the voice. He was the drills. Aaron Horn. Just over nine points a game a year ago. Has five, now six tonight. You know, you see Ralph Willard. We talk about Ralph. A lot of Patino's guys are moving on. You see Tubby Smith. Got a head job down at Tulsa. Doing a solid job at Tulsa. They say they're going to be really good next season. They got a lot of young players. Bruce Willard, an assistant with Patino. Herb Sendick now at Miami of Ohio, replacing Mr. Joby Wright, who's now at Wyoming. Oh, nice give and go. Oh. Got the charge. He's a little bit out of control. But he was starting to see a little Jordan skew, the way he was hanging in the air. No, I'm not comparing him to Michael, because there is only one Michael. A little give and go. Even Michael will jump out of his seat. Come on, Michael. I know you're watching in Chicago. There he is flying. 
That defense doesn't get there. He lays that down. Place explodes. And a charge on the other end on Frelix. Frelix can't believe it. He says, I can't believe it. Look at Ralph with that pose. That was an opportunity to make it a 10-point game. And Frelix with the charge erases that opportunity. Sloppy basketball, but yep. that's expected when you're seeing trapping defenses and have only been playing two weeks. And more than that, when you look at Western Kentucky with seven new players, very difficult to get into your system this early and play a team with the caliber of North Carolina with the experience they have. Carolina turns it right back over. A dozen miscues against North Carolina, ten against the Hilltoppers. You know, it's always There's that sloppy play Dick was just talking about. It's always easier, Brad, being a freshman coming to a college scene where you don't have to be the number one option like Stackhouse and Wallace with this team because of Montrose and Phelps. Lob a little too high, handled by Hall. He got a couple of tries, and he'll go to the free throw line. Hall played at Northwestern High School. I was fortunate enough to recruit a young player that played for me by the name of Terry Tyler, who played over 10 years in the NBA, came out of Northwestern, and really produced a lot, a lot of outstanding college players. Salvador has picked up his third, so we'll see if Wallace comes in for him. He will. Salvador will probably sit the remainder of the half with 317 left. I like Montrose's hairdo. That's what my hairdo looked like when I graduated college. It really did. I had a two cut just like Eric. In fact, I had more hair than Eric. Look at that crew do. That was mine. I was really a good looking guy. I this is higher like in Eric. the air than yours was, so. <laughs> you said to him in warm ups, you think you can make this team? He said, Dick, I'm trying. <laughs> he never smiled, but it was a pretty good line. I didn't think you were listening. Were you listening to all those I pay attention. Time. Hall with a free throw. That's three for Hall. And here it can be a 10-point game if he hits the second. It's amazing, you know, they stay right within him and they haven't knocked down the three, which they're very capable of doing. Oh, they got a break there and a basket from Macklin. Macklin, great legs again. I think he's going to get a lot of play in time. Instead of 10, it's nine points with 3.05 to go. And the McGinnis pick up the foul on the other end. Look at this, look at this. Look at the emotion. Look at the emotion right A little bump. Give him another bump. Darius Hall. That's the call. The bench getting into it. They, they won 26 games last year. They're going to have an outstanding year again this year. They really are. Because remember this, they're not going to be battling the likes of North Carolina in the Sunbelt Conference. McGinnis loses the handle, pushes off, trying to get the loose ball. Look at this. Look at this. We saw that kind of fire even in practice yesterday. They, they definitely demonstrated that kind of spirit. That's not hot ball. That's just spirit and excitement and jubilation. McGinnis may be done for a long time tonight. That's his fourth foul. And Hall. That's usually an area that freshmen have a major problem with making that transition. The game's a little faster paced than they're acclimated to on a high school level, and they get themselves in foul trouble quite a bit. In fact, I'm sure Digger Phelps sitting in the studio will attest to that. He can talk a little bit about that, making his debut at ESPN. Eight-point game, 41-33. Closest since it was 20-13. to And the only way they're staying in this game is because they're aggressive in this defensively forcing turnover. And they almost forced another one. Great job of fronting Montrose by Darius Hall to knock it away. They love the hug. They call it the Western Kentucky hug. They report about that. They love the hug and say, we love each other. We play together. We're a family. And that's all produced by Ralph Willard. Hilltopper hugs. That's right. They call it the Hilltopper hug. Williams with Horn all over him, and they'll double Williams, who's been quiet offensively. Reese wide open. Three. Don't go. See, Wallace made a mistake right there. He should have posted right back to the basketball. And Calabria goes down hard on the backside. They're going to call a foul on Fralix. Dante up in a hurry. I'm surprised. He really landed hard on the tailbone. When they reversed the basketball, Wallace, all he had to do was pivot back and reverse to the ball, and he had a layup. But he never came back to the basketball, and we got the jump shot out of Calabria. Calabria to the free throw line didn't make many trips to the free throw line last year. Hit 78% of the time he was there. Dante's dad played for Iowa. Back in the 60s. The Hawkeyes. Dante saw more 
playing time than any other North Carolina freshman a year ago. Sophomore out of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Wait a minute, my favorite quarterback came out of that. Joe, Joe, Willie, Joe, Willie, David. What shot, gentlemen? Williams, Calabria, Montrose, Stackhouse, and Wallace on the floor for North Carolina. Calabria gives him a threat to shoot the three. Something, as I talked about earlier, if there are two areas that they'd have to be concerned with is when they play big with Salvador and Montrose, they'll have great quickness and perimeter shooting. Nice pass from Horn inside to Hall. He missed the first shot, missed the second shot, and it's still Hilltopper's ball. I'll tell you one thing. You better lay an A on effort for these kids from Western Kentucky. I mean, they are battling and scrapping against all the odds. Everybody expecting the blowout, but they're saying we're not going to let them blow us out. They didn't make the trip in from Bowling Green just to show up. They're trying to hang with the number one team in the country and so far doing a pretty good job of it. And they haven't been able to capitalize on one of their real keys to their game, knocking down the three. That was a smart move. Got Freilix out of that baseline as the inbound man <laughs> at about 5'10 and try to get somebody a little taller in there. North Carolina goes for the 2-3 zone. Got to get in the gap to see him. Spot someone off. One can shoot the three. They all have the license to shoot it. We don't have a three that's been made yet tonight. There's your Horn. Ooh, air ball. Air ball. Hall back out. Kept his foot down. Horn will try another one. Still can't find it. And Stackhouse, the rebound. But the steal, Frelick, four on one. They should make this one pay off, and they do. Nice conversion, good steal, forcing a turnover. We talked about earlier in the telecast. One of the keys, their traps are going to have to force the turnover. They've been doing it. North Carolina hasn't had a field goal in about three minutes. And Montross gets fouled inside. I think one of the problems when you see North Carolina, very difficult to get into a rhythm when you're constantly changing the lineup. And Dean Smith has done that for years, so I'm certainly not here questioning his coaching style, but it's very difficult, especially earlier in the season, to get into a flow and a rhythm when you have five new players constantly on the floor. Eric Montross, seven-footer, 275, senior out of Indianapolis, and an all-ACC performer, and as we said, a preseason first-team All-American choice. Broke the hearts of the people at Michigan where his mom and dad went to school. They thought he'd go to Michigan. And Indiana thought they had a great chance to keep him home. His teammate Todd Leary is playing with the Hoosiers. And anyway, you know, getting back to my previous statement, I thought you'd jump on me about that. Dean's only got 700 and about 70 more wins many, than I did. I was going to say, how many more? <laughs> Montross. I've been unbeaten, though, on TV. Monday, Coach Carolina, Wednesday, Kentucky. I haven't lost a game in 15 years. We'll see if that holds up tonight. Montross got them both. Ten-point game. Now, one final four. 90 seconds. They go to a little one-four. Four guys along the baseline and a guy at the point. We're just 129 away from the Delta Fawcett halftime report. Coming up, we'll have a conversation with Dean Smith. John Saunders and uh, the gang will bring you up to date on what else is going on in college basketball. And Digger Phelps with his analysis. Hey, I'll tell you one thing. Delta Fawcett out of Indianapolis. I was with their people recently. You ready for this? They sold in one year. Ten million faucets. I can't believe that. Ten million faucets. Chris Robinson on the line. We try to research every statistic involved in our telephone. I knew you were doing something in your hotel room today. Robinson Short. He's really come up empty for a guy with his talent. We were really impressed with him at practice. And he'll be a very good player. Stackhouse sits Salvadori, comes back in. Stackhouse has three, but so does Salvadori. So uh, he doesn't want to pick up a cheap fourth foul on the remaining 129 either. Robinson finally breaks the string. Has two points on the game, and it's a nine-point Carolina lead. They need a big year out of him to replace Darnell Mee, who's now with the Denver Nuggets. Donald Williams kicks it out to Reese. He leaves it inside for Salvadori. Too hard. Rebound Rodgers. Three on three. Up high with the shot as Robinson couldn't get it. And the rebound Salvadori. Wait a minute. Foul inside on Montrose. That'll be Eric's second. A little bit of 
foul trouble for North Carolina right now. Phelps and Reese with two, Salvadori with three, Montross two, Stackhouse with three, and McGinnis with four. But if you're if you're going to have a team getting foul trouble, why not have the deepest bench in the country? Right? Exactly. When you got a team that can line up with a second club of Stackhouse, Wallace, and talk about players like McGinnis on a second team in Calabria. I mean, that second team really in many situations can win over 20 games and finish in the top 20 in the nation. Deion Jackson into the lineup for the first time. Nephew of uh, Kenny Jackson, former number one pick of the Philadelphia Eagles, and now back at his alma mater at Penn State, great wide receiver. Deion went to Vincennes Junior College, where they produced a lot of great players. In fact, one that played here at North Carolina, Bob McAdoo. 38 points, 45-38, seven-point game. sloppy really play but I'll tell you one thing these kids have hung in they were ready to get blown out when they were down about 15 but they didn't have any quit in them and they just kept trapping and he changed their style of play either Rogers picks up his second foul so with 103 left it'll be Williams at the free throw line the guy that led the Atlantic Coast Conference from the strike last year 83 percent great story he was telling me that his freshman year was quite an adjustment came here as a star sat on a pine a lot of people said I told you so you shouldn't have went there you're not going to play but his dad was his great inspiration his dad said be patient he was patient and last year he became a star the MVP of the NCAA championship got both the free throws Freilich and Horn will come back in for the Hilltoppers who trail 47 38 but a chance to bring it down court and cut into that lead again you know it's great just mentioning his dad being his inspiration so many kids get such bad advice and oh quit quit go somewhere else steal by Salvador Williams alone there it is hello Warner High School, Donna Williams. That's exactly what Western Kentucky did not need. Now they're down 11, and they've got to face the pressure again of the double team coming up. Little Salvador, he's got to post somebody up and bring it opposite. There it is, the opposite look. They almost turn it over again. Fralix, three. Not even close. The outside shooting of Western Kentucky has not been good tonight. And that's an area where we really, really excel in shooting the three. The Rick Pitino kind of style of play. Western Kentucky 0 for 8 on their three-pointers tonight. And that's something they were so strong in, as Dick mentioned. They hit last year 205 three-pointers in 32 games. And tonight, a big goose egg up there with less than a half minute to go first half. But see, that's one of the areas you turn a negative to a positive when you speak to your club. Hey, we're down 11, and we went 0 for 8 from the three-point line. So here's the rule, the five-second rule. Normally, this would be right now a turnover. Dribble all day. Make a dribble. Boring, boring. William boring. Jumper got it. With seven and a half seconds left. That's going to be a boring part of basketball. Put Western the ball Kentucky has got a hustle here. Got to put it up. Rodgers does. And rattled it off the iron. North Carolina led by as many as 15. They're up by 13 at halftime as we send it back to the studio and John Saunders. John. All right, guys. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by New Sierra. It's not just antifreeze, it's safety freeze. Halftime of the Dean Dome. Carolina with a 13-point lead over the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Welcome back to Chapel Hill, everybody. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale along with you. Got to give the Hilltoppers credit. They're scrappy, Dick, but the problem is they're outmanned. Well, you know, they did a great job in terms of their defense force and turnovers. But like you and I were talking, they weren't converting. They shot poorly. 0 for 10 from three-point land, and they're down 13. 13 against most clubs, you put a club away. Western Kentucky is very dangerous. But the key, I thought, was the power inside. Take a look right now. North Carolina. We're going to watch their out-of-bounds play. They like to flip it up and send one of their seven-footers to go get the ball. Take a look at it right here. They're going to flip the ball up on top. There goes Montrose. The ball goes up in the air. He catches. He brings it down. And now he's going to take it up with a little power dunk. So power, the difference on the interior. Another phase. We're going to see Mr. Stackhouse drive in the lane. We're going to watch Mr. Montrose get great post position. And he's going to kick it to the inside. We take a look here. Stackhouse, the freshman, freeze it. 
Look at that right inside. He draws two defenders to him, and he gives the ball, and Mr. Montrose takes it up and scores. I thought Stackhouse was sensational with eight points and four rebounds. That kind of passing and those kind of shots helps Carolina to 65% from the floor. And as you can see, not only poor field goal shooting, poor from the free throw line for the Hilltoppers. They just haven't shot well. Rebounds relatively even, and there have been a lot of turnovers, but Carolina has made them pay off, and Western Kentucky has and Nobody's hit a three yet, which is kind of rare in this day and age in college basketball. 0 for 14 between both clubs. If somebody knocks a three down, I'm going to sprint on the court, I'm going to hug them, <laughs> and I'm going to give them a trophy. Stackhouse will start the second half for Carolina instead of Salvadori. So he's out there with the four returning starters from last year's championship team. He earned it with his performance in the first half. Yeah, he really did. Eight points. Four rebounds and some excellent passes. Or nice pass in low, and Bunton goes up and jams it. That's great interior passing. Stackhouse had it knocked away from behind by Hall. They really like to drive the ball right at the Carolina big people on the inside. They have two things they like to do, drive and kick it out, or drive and dump it to the baseline. Dribble penetration, Duke does that exceptionally well. Drive the gap Mike Krzyzewski's clubs love to do. That may be the first jump shot they have hit outside of about 12 feet all night, and it's Darren Horn. And he was a big player for them all last year, Darren Horn. So they slice the lead back to double digits here in the first minute of the second half. Loose ball, and Chris Robinson took out a couple of Tar Heel cheerleaders and almost got Tony Britt, our stat man, to boot. I'm so impressed with the effort. I mean, you talk about the effort. I like to talk about the three E's, effort, enthusiasm, and excitement, and they really, really... They generate that all the time. 51-42, Montross. First basket in the second half for the Tar Heels. They have no answer for Mr. Montross. There aren't many colleges in the country that have an answer to match up on him once they get in their five-man game and get into a 30-foot basketball game. Horn kicks it out. Fralix all alone for three, and he still is having trouble from out there. Robinson with a follow, though. Nice job to... Robinson Back up there. The tip. We saw again part of their offensive scheme. Drive and kick it out. A blocking foul on Western Kentucky. It's not Robinson. Boy, Stackhouse really sneaks out in transition. Puts a lot of pressure on the defense. After a conversion, he likes to release and get out in a break. First team Stackhouse, eight points in the first half. Average 26 a game last year at Oak Hill. See, take a look at their system right here. Drives, and he kicks it right out of Horn. They want that. That's part of their system. That's the Kentucky system. Kick it out, but they have Travis Ford who shoots 53% from three-point range. Stackhouse, that's about the first thing he's done wrong tonight, Mr. Free Throw. Well, you know, mentioned in Kentucky, what a baseline. They got six guys that can play on that baseline, and I believe Roderick Rhodes this year got the message from Rick Pitino. Play hard, and you'll be special. And I think he will be a special player, marquee player this season. Ashburn and the pros, he'll have to be one of the marquee players. Ten-point game, North Carolina. Oh, nice look. Great pass. Montross blocks Hall, and Carolina gets the ball to boot. Montross blocks... 47 shots last year to lead the Tar Heels. Salvadori was second on that list. North Carolina likes to post up Eric Montross against the trap. Got a little walking violation. 17 turnovers against North Carolina. We're just two minutes into the second half. And it's amazing, you know, when you think about it, because they're an experienced basketball team. But Western Kentucky, that is their strength. Forced to turnover. 21 times last year, teams averaged 21 turnovers against Western Kentucky's pressure. If you're going to force the turnovers, though, you've got to make points on the other end. There's a turnover story, but the points off turnover is not a strong suit so far for the Hilltown. Oh. Nice move with a left hand by Cephas Button. They worked on that in practice today. They said, Button, if we get you one-on-one -on -one against Montross, we want you to take him to the goal and beat him with your quickness. Montross fouled as he went up in close. They really reflect their coach's teachings, and that's the thing that's impressed me with Western Kentucky. I don't care what the score says here tonight. I'm impressed with Ralph Willard's basketball team. 
Well, as Dick mentioned, you can close your eyes at practice and just listen, and you think you've got Rick Pitino <laughs> on the floor. I'll tell you, Rick Pitino is such a master motivator, teacher, instructor, and I don't have to stroke him. Everybody in America knows that. That's why he's sought after by so many clubs every year. And his people have learned well really working under him. You sound like you're trying to get a free meal up there. In that <laughs> <laughs> well, Cincinnati up six with Antonio Winfield. Charlotte, boy, that town's going to be jumping the ACC tournament, and then you have also the NCAA championship, and the Charlotte Hornets look special. And even though my, my Charlotte pick, Panthers coming. My picks to win it all this year. Seattle in the NBA. Forget Charles the round man of rebound of Phoenix. Seattle with Gill and company. 56-46 Carolina, 17-35 to play. This is a big conversion, getting it down to single digits. If they can convert right here. See Montrose out here. Chasing people and trying to get them away from the basket. North Carolina pushes it. And Williams gave up a three, takes a two. Montross, did he push off to get yep. that rebound? They get it. Ooh, and getting Montross with a little push off. That's three on Montross. I think we'll see Wallace come in. And then we'll see Wallace come in. Do not move. Do not move. Full court pressure from North Carolina. Oh. There's the double. Now two it's on two one. on one. Fralix will pull up. And finally he gets a jumper to go. Smart play. Rather than giving it up on a baseline to challenge Eric Montrose with a little guy, he knocks down the jumper. This is the first round of the national invitation tournament from Chapel Hill, North Carolina with just under 17 minutes to go in the ball game. And it's a 56-48 ball game in Western Kentucky hanging with the number one team in the land. Oh, nice play. Good look. What a great look. Montross clears off the miss. A big miss by Macklin. And then the foul to add to it on Darius Hall. That is a big play. They could have gotten it down to six. Had the two-man play. Horn made an excellent pass. Watch Horn right here. He steps right in the gap, splits the defense. What a great look. Little Rex Chapman style. There's the little jumper. Macklin couldn't get it, though, and then the foul. So it could be a four-point swing here with 16.35 to go. That was a little Anthony Hardaway. A little penny time right there. Stackhouse lost the handle, but Williams cleans it up and goes in low. A score to basket. Anytime you interfere with that basketball directly in the center of the goal, they're going to count that. Montross with the goaltending has 14. Here's another look. Ball's got to have a chance to go in for it to be a goaltending call. He's got to get the ball on its upward flight, not downward. And there's the help side, comes over. Goaltending. Every time they make that little run, North Carolina comes out with a spurt. They've got an answer every time. Great behind the What a great pass. play. What a great play. What a look around the back. Magic Johnson throws it around the back for the layup. 58 to 50. Stackhouse three is deflected. Deflected and hits nothing but the net. Here's a chance again to cut it to six. Horn has really picked up his game. Robinson rattled a three. Horn tried to keep it alive, but Montross will clear it ahead to Phelps. Can't get that three to go down. Phelps, nice spin, tipped by Salvador. All those big guys hanging around the basket at seven feet. Very difficult. They wear you out. Another four-point swing. A chance to cut it to six. Instead, it's ten. You're a mathematical genius. I don't know about that. <laughs> I can look at the scoreboard, though. 60-50, Tar Heel. Good move in the baseline. Montross is six oh, rebound right and had the stack right out. Out. Oh, he tried to reverse jam. He had the easy dunk. He tried to showboat, and he tried to reverse it and came up empty. I looked at Dean Smith's eyes after that, and it's a three-pointer on the other end by Bunton. That's a five-point turnaround. That's a bad play right there by Jerry Stackhouse. Had the easy layup. Williams knifes in, had it partially blocked. They are going to call a foul, though, on the baseline. First three-point field goal made tonight by either team after a 1 for 13, an 0 for 13 start. Jerry comes out of the game. That's a little reminder that we at North Carolina want the sure deuce. There's the great outlet, the Wes Unsell style. 
Throws it over the top. There's Stackhouse ahead. Now he's got the layup, but now he's going to try to reverse. He's going to try to win a slam dunk contest right there. Instead, he bricks it. Brick City, Jerry. Coach Smith hasn't talked to him yet. Now he bring it up sometime. Though. Now he goes to Ben City, Jerry. <laughs> that was enough talk right there. That was it. Don't have to say much. <laughs> See, when you've got the kind of talent that he possesses, you just say, hey, I'll make you an assistant coach. Don't have to say anything. <laughs> and guys like Jerry, they want to be on the floor. Rodgers comes in for Frelix and Williams at the free throw line where he's perfect tonight. MVP of the Final Four. With 25 against Kansas, 25 against Michigan, 12 tonight. And it's a nine-point North Carolina lead with 15.08 to play in the ballgame. Carolina led by 13 and a half. It's been cut to nine with plays like this, Dick. I tell you, watch Robinson now. He's going to reverse the ball into Mr. Button. He's going to step here, but this is going to be the guy that's going to convert. We're going to watch this play develop right here. Now, here comes Cephas Button, 34. Keep it up. Freeze it. Now, watch this. He spots right here around the back. He should slide in, but he doesn't. And there it goes around the back. And Mr. Hall says, look, I got a layup. I'm behind <laughs> Mr. Montrose. I love it. What a way to make a living. Don't tell my bosses I do this for nothing. Please, don't tell them that. I've been getting paid to sit here at Quartzside. Three of nine in the second half for Western Kentucky and Carolina. Oh, he tried to fake that. Little Hollywood. He didn't get away with it either. Horn, oh, poor boy. He shot three free throws coming up. See, Darren Horn has really stepped up in the second half in terms of his dribble penetration, attacking gaps. I love that dribble penetration. I love it. And you used to go watch Duke play with Hill and certainly Hurley attacking that gap in scene. Darren Horn, three out of four from the line tonight. That's about where he was a year ago. He was a 76% free throw shooter, and he has got three chances right here. Got the first. That puts him in double digits with 10. He can play either the second guard slot or the small forward. Many of their players are interchangeable. He likes that kind of style of play, but he's not going to get the seven-foot marquee recruit. Got the second. Journalism major wants to be a sports broadcaster. Wow. That's my job. Yeah. Because if I can do it, he says anybody can. He's got to lose some hair. I mean, he sees me on the year. He says, hey, Dick Vitale, you're my <laughs> idol. If you can make a living doing it, anybody in America can. Well, he shoots free throws just like you. He hit all three of them. All of a sudden, it's a six-point ball game. They don't want to go away. This club will not go away. The record indicates they can play with people. The freshman Wallace, no good. Way up high for the rebound is Jackson. I mean, you have a track record like these kids do in terms of beating, like last year, Seton Hall. And some key players returning, like Mr. Horn. He played a lot last year. A little short on that jumper. And a foul is going to be called on Phelps. Crowd won't like that one, neither does Derek. That's three on him. Derek played over at Vice the King High School, played with Khalid Reeves, who I think this year is going to have a big year for Arizona. He and Scott Amaro will form an outstanding backcourt down here in the Pac-10. Take a look at the foul on Phelps. Look at this, shoe laying there. Hey, shoeless. He said, I got to get my shoe. He said, I got to go down the floor with my shoe. Look at this right here. There he is Hall. He said, I got to get my shoe off. Try to tell the Tar Heels they're not a shoe in to win this. Robinson outside. Got it. That's the guy that has to start to light it up. Robinson, very quiet all night long. This is the closest it's been since it was 16 to 13. It's a four-point Carolina lead. Reese leaves it for Wallace. Great pass. Nice pass, and there's Wallace at the point of the pressure at 6'11". Very agile. Got to have a trail man to reverse the ball to. Hey, remember this, this crowd's getting nervous. They already bought tickets for Friday night. They sold tickets in their season ticket plan for Friday. Horn doesn't get the roll. Rebound is loose. And Calabria is going to pick up the foul. There's the dribble penetration by Reese on the baseline. Nice spin. And then there's the dump down on the box to Rasheed Wallace from the city of Ruggly Love. Mr. Dean Smith went the day after winning the national championship to his house. And that really impressed him, impressed his family. And he said, I'm going to Chapel Hill. 
Button gives it right back to the man that brought the pass in. And then the feed in low to Jackson, and he's fine. Do you think there's any chance that Ralph Willard showed them the season ticket plan that they sold tickets for Friday night, anticipating winning the first round? Do you think he did that? Well, a lot was made <laughs> of that fact by a lot of people, but uh, John Swafford, the athletic director in North Carolina, said, hey, we had to put it in the package because we couldn't try to sell 22,000 tickets in two days. So it's part of the package, and the package right now is that it's a four-point ball game. It's and a steal by Adams. Right here. Give it up. Horn. What Robinson. a great look. Stripped away by Phelps, but he picked up another foul. Good, good play by Phelps coming over. They had the sure lift. Look at the hugs. Look at the hugs. Look at the bumps. I'll tell you one thing, this club is very, very aggressive, tenacious, scrappy, anticipate. Now he's going to kick it back, he's going to get it right back. What a great look by Horn. And there's Phelps with the reach and the grab. Last year, after making the Sweet 16, beating Memphis State and Seton Hall, and then losing to sixth-ranked Florida State in uh, overtime, they ended the season, Western Kentucky, ranked in the top 20 for the first time since 1971. And that was a Final Four team in 71. Well, somebody forgot to tell them they came in here tonight unranked. I'll tell you one thing, Brad. You and I noticed it yesterday and today at the workout. They were not intimidated. We were talking to several of the guys. They're not intimidated at all coming in here. I think half the battle, some teams coming here really are intimidated. There's a little stun. Look at that stun on that sideline. The closest it's been since it was 4-2 Carolina. Very sloppy North Carolina. Can't get into their offense. Montross, and he is fouled by Bunton as he goes up for the jam. Their defense, impressiveness, and quickness is really negating North Carolina getting into their passing game and their motion game. That foul on Bunton is going to bring Hall off the bench because Bunton is in foul trouble now. Here's another look. They're going to bring the ball right to their All-American, but they're going to come right at them. I mean, button in the hole. They're not intimidated. They're coming right at challenge and error. Four fouls on button. That's the bad news. And he has really been a catalyst and a, and a guy that's gotten tough rebounds and played great defense, but he fouls Montross, who go to the line for a couple. And, you know, statistically, Eric's not a great free throw shooter. Shot under 70% last year. I'll tell you one thing, that message in the Sun Belt, New Orleans is going to be good again. They only lose Irvin Johnson, and they were 18-0 during the regular season last year. South Alabama, Ronnie Arrow's got a good club, and I'll tell you what, this club is going to be tough to beat in their league. A basket makes it a one-point game. A three-pointer will tie it. But they walk with it instead. Got to settle down. North Carolina right now is going to find himself, make the extra pass, and bring the ball in the half-court game inside. If I'm North Carolina right now, I run a little high-low with Wallace and with Montross. I'd slide Wallace either on the box and slide Montross up high, or there goes Wallace up high. Dump it into him. He's a good passer. Bill Topper's going to try a little zone here, and there's a zone buster. He is a zone buster. He's been quiet, has not been looking for his shot, has not been moving exceptionally well without the ball. Donald Williams. First three of the night for Carolina, and the lead goes back to six. That three is a real, real heartbreaker when that goes down for the opponent. Rodgers leaves the pass. Jackson intimidated by Montross. Carolina ball. Just when it got down to a two-point game, Western Kentucky is having some problems. And with that in mind, they'll take a timeout. And we will, too. 12-20 left in the ball game. They're on their feet at the Smith Center. Their team in front by six. Returning score for UMass. The Minutemen ranked 22nd, taking on Cleveland State's Vikings and the Rice Owls. Trapping defense. Williams with a quiet 15 so far tonight. A great pass to Montrose. There's the answer. Go to a two-man game. Half court. Put the ball up high. Mr. Montrose takes over on the baseline. 17 for Montrose. Size and power really presents a major, major dilemma. You can answer that if you got some guys that can knock that three down. 
dehorn. They want to drive the gap right now. Frelick would like to drive the gap and kick it out. Derek Robinson with five on the shot clock. Nice ball reversal. They swung the basketball over to Robinson. That's a dozen for Robinson. And it's 70-64. They're hoping by trapping also that Montrose has got to come up to give help that maybe he gets physically tired. That was one of their plans today at their shoot-around. Talked about, well, bring Montrose back. He can wear him out a little bit. That ball bounced off the foot of Horn, not Williams, who was the player that was dribbling. So it's Carolina ball in the front court. 25 on the shot clock. We haven't had to mention the shot clock too often tonight. Of course, new this year, 35 instead of 45 seconds. Oh, and they missed Stackhouse. Had a backdoor cut. Trying to run a double screen for Williams. Williams. Oh, he got hit off balance. He, he got, got hammered. hammered. He got hammered. And poetic justice, I guess. A turnover on the other end against Western Kentucky. How did three guys miss that, baby? I'll tell you, Donald Williams got crap. Came off like a double screen. They call it a stagger screen, Western Kentucky. Donald with that look on his face because of this. Uh, take a look right now. You tell me. There's a little head fake. Now he's going to take the jumper. Up he goes. Wow. Fralix hits a three for the Hilltoppers. That's his first three. Came at a great time. It cuts the lead to three. Look at that pressure defensively. Stackhouse. Alone, explosive, explosive, can't teach that. Just took off from the sideline in the wind and said, let me get to the glass. Five-point game, 10.35 to play. Horn pulls up. He's got the jumper going now. That's yeah. something they desperately need. They're shooting with a lot more confidence. Carolina releasing like that Boston Celtic transition. Stackhouse driving the baseline is fouled. For years, the Celtics used to take the ball after a score and throw the ball down the court, especially when they had Larry Bird with that baseball pass. Hey, mention the Celtics. How good and deep is North Carolina? You and I were talking about it. Matt Wenstrom last year was like a third-string center. I mean, played very little time. He is good enough to make the Celtics roster. Button is fouled out. Leaves with 11 points and four rebounds. And they're going to miss him, no doubt about that. He leaves with 10.21 left. 30 seconds to make the substitution. If Cephas Button played this ball game with a chip bone in his ankle, I can't wait to see him healthy because he played most of it way above the rim. I'll tell you, he missed a lot of practice time. They're expecting a big, big year out of Cephas. And because of the kind of personnel they have, they can leave guys on the floor with the four fouls and bring somebody else in who can run and jump. Look at that help fronting inside. Good defensive front. Williams off the glass. He's starting to pick it up offensively. I think he's got about 17 now. He sure does with half the second half remaining. 74-69. Horn triple teamed and lost it. Over dribbling by Horn right there. Williams pulls up. Salvador keeps it alive. I said it was a great rebound by Salvador. In traffic. North Carolina is being tested and really being given an unbelievable match here. I don't think people anticipated this at all, Brad. Calabria comes in. McGinnis goes out. Here's the trouble again by Horn in that traffic of North Carolina Tars. Look at four guys around him. Look at this. Going after the basketball. This is John Madden style. I mean, they're on the floor. They're giving up their skin. They're on their knees. They're kicking it out. Leads to a foul on the other end on uh, Greg Glass. And so, John Salvador will go to the free throw line. 71% free throw shooter last year. This is his first trip to the line tonight. Seven rebounds to go with his six points. You know, people think about his invincibility. I doubt very much this club, if people are anticipating undefeated, are really a little bit wacky because today's day and age, with the kind of games you have to play on the road, the talent you need, I mean, they're going to be certainly a talented and a dominant basketball team, but they're not the invincible team. They're a team that has some holes, and they really do. I mean, they got a second club we know is outstanding potentially, but you can only put five on the floor at one time. 
Just getting through the ACC unbeaten is an almost impossibility. Remember, this team lost to Duke and Georgia Tech and Wake Forest last year, three of their four losses. But they won 34, and they won the whole shebang in New Orleans. There's nothing wrong winning 34 and losing four if you win the goal. Glass working against Salvadori. Is Robinson slicing the middle. Doesn't get the bounce. Western keeps it alive. Horn, he's had the hot hand. And he's fouled by Brian Reese. I love the way Horn attacks the defense. He sees the hole, the young kids out there, whenever you're playing. If you see a little gap in the seam, use that dribble penetration to attack that gap. Try to draw help and then kick it out. Look at Ralph. I mean, he's got that little style. He's a little happy because he knows, he knows right now he's got a lot of positives he can sell to his kids. Horn tried a three outside and didn't get it. Calabria pulls it off all by himself on the backside. 76-69. Seven-point Carolina lead. Oh, nice look. Salvadori fouled by Hall. You got to be a great leaper when you're only 6'7 because there's two seven-footers out there for Carolina, and this kid is a great leaper. Hall picks up his third. Salvadori. Good We're job. seeing so many traps. There's the good touch, the good anticipation. He knows where Salvadori is on that box. They're going to see the same kind of pressure from Cincinnati, basically. You talk about traps if Cincinnati holds on and beats Butler. They'll come here with a new cast, Bobby Huggins, in terms of a lot of young players as one of the outstanding recruiting classes in America, headed by D'Antonio Wingfield. Wingfield had a good first half, John Phillips, in our halftime uh, report. 77-69. Nine Carolina to go. The way to get into this now, they got to knock down a three. And with the 2-3 zone, there it is. Oh, Horn. The pass wasn't the greatest, so Horn went back inside with it. Carolina wanted to jump ball. Instead, they got a foul on Salvadori. Yeah, Horn had really the open jumper, but you're right, Brad. It was not a good pass. They had to make the catch and allowed the defense to be able to react to him and set up. Salvadori with four fouls now. Montross with three. And Phelps on the bench with four. Darius Hall of the free throw line. Tenacious, relentless pressure after every conversion by Western Kentucky. Hall is only two of six from the free throw line. Here comes Stackhouse and Salvador will sit down. The reason he's wearing those glasses, he scratched his eye just recently. Darius Hall. He's got the Kareem goggles on. Well, if you think it's the goggles that's doing it at the free throw line, he only shot 48% there. I'm trying to give the kid it out, and you got to go do your research. See, you're so prepared. We missed them both, and here comes Carolina. Here comes Donald Williams. When in doubt, get it over to Donald Williams. And he'll make the yell timeout, baby. 20 for Williams, and the lead balloons back to 11 just that quickly. In the end, up the button nylon. Glass outside. He rattles one off the iron. Carolina will fight for the rebound. Who's going to get it? Loose ball. North Carolina basketball. I'll tell you, it looks like they're playing for an NCAA championship. Opening game, diving on the floor, hustling. Look at that intensity. Look at that intensity. Rick Pitino will be proud of this guy right now. Rick's saying, that's my guy, Ralph. That's my guy. Full court pressure coming from the Hilltoppers. Okay, we look at the country, you and I were talking. Let's not forget Arkansas. Nolan Richardson, what a job he's done down here. This year he's got the tank. He was 11 and a half pounds at birth. His mother called him a tank when he was two years old. Darnell Robinson. He's another one of those real special freshman players. Carolina on an 8-0 run in the last couple minutes. You see, right now, Carolina could really put them away. Get the ball to the power guy. Or that guy. Williams misses that one. Horn the rebound. It's a four on two. Rodgers with the left hand. Nice pass from Horn to Rodgers. I love the way Horn finds the open man and gives the ball up. Can't hand check him. Horn's got to get a hand off him. Point of emphasis this year. Not allowed to put a hand on an offensive player. Rodgers will pick up that foul. That's his third. Well, if we 
think we've had a pretty good fight in Chapel Hill. We've got a pretty good one coming up next. Top ranked boxing, 12 rounds, IBF Cruiserweight title on the line. Al Ice Cole, the champion, will take on Vincent Bolwer, ranked seventh by the USBA. That's coming up next. Sam Rosen and Al Bernstein bring you all the action. Cruiserweight championship of the world on top ranked boxing next. Sam, I used to work with Sam about 14 years ago. Now he's in a fight game. Sam probably doesn't even remember me. Williams. <laughs> Everybody's worked with you at one time or another. <laughs> Donald Williams, I thought it was great hearing him talk about his dad and how much his dad meant to him in that freshman year when it was an adjustment period, coming out of high school and having to sit on a pine. He didn't allow his son to take the easy way out and quit and want to transfer. He says, hang in, hang in, be patient. You're a player, your time will come. And his time did come. So many other kids, they want instant gratification immediately. And if it doesn't happen, they immediately blame the coach or the system. Williams has the quietest 22 points you'll ever see tonight. His team's up by 11. We're under eight minutes from the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill. They're going to get back right now. they got to find a way to kick it in and out for a couple threes. Ball kick, so Western Kentucky will get another chance. We've got a timeout with 7.48 to play in the ball game. North Carolina has stretched their lead back to 11. I'll tell you one thing, you mentioned Massachusetts. They're playing Cleveland State on ESPN. Cleveland State is going to have some really quality athletes. And Michael Boyd, who a lot of people don't realize this at Cleveland State, he did a great job at Michigan and played an important role in Michigan winning that national championship in 1989 as an assistant coach. He did a great job under Mr. Peter. He's got some good athletes. But Marcus Camby, remember that name from Massachusetts. He's 6'10", agile, and I'm going to tell you, he can play. We only showed you one side of the 16-team bracket. And Cincinnati and Butler play also tonight and they lead Cincinnati does by 13 if they win that it looks like they're coming to Chapel Hill Count it. Donald Williams has taken this game over he has taken it over Allah, just like he did in the final game against Michigan number 14 Michael Kravitz Certain guys are just born to score. Here's Williams right now in transition. He hangs in the lane, the little one-hander, the knee up in the air, the conversion. He shot that all of my guy, John Sanders, and Digger Phelps. That's the old style, the knee up in the air. Like Digger shot when he played at Ryder College. <laughs> One of the great cupcakes in all of America. I'm only kidding. If Williams hits the free throw, and he does. He's got 25, which is the same score they had against both Kansas and Michigan to win that MVP in the final four. So 25 for Williams. And the lead's back up to 14. And he really got going late, Brad. 15 of his 25 points here in the second half. They're in a zone right now, North Carolina. Going to force them to shoot over the top of that zone and a great inside rebounding position with Montrose and Salvador. Robinson, three. See, they force you to do that and then try to get good inside position with the triangle defensively. Uh, nice hustle by Horn trying to get the rebound, but he stepped out of bounds. A lot of big gaps in that zone. Whatever you can do to zone defense, you allow a lot of seams and gaps. Right now, I'd punish. I'd bring the ball right into Montrose. Right down into the big fella. And it strips. Salvadori picks it up, puts it home. Well, Montrose says that's a little assist. I gave it to my <laughs> buddy Salvadori. That 2-3 zone, forcing you to go over the top, taking away anything to the interior. Because it takes some time off the clock. Makes you use time. The zone forces you to make that extra pass, move the ball. Horn had it stripped away, picked up the loose ball. Robinson will try it out there again and drains a three. Robinson said you can leave the gap, I'm going to knock it down. Tell you what, he's had a big second half. Robinson only had two points in the first half. Has 13 in the second. Very smart play by Dean Smith's kids. They line up with Williams and Montrose on the same side of the floor. You have to come out and respect Mr. Williams' jumper, so now you'll get the ball inside. Michelangelo, an artist. Just watch him work. It's always a pleasure to watch him in the gym. He says his golf game suffered in the offseason because they were national champions, but I think he'd give up that bag of sticks again to repeat this year for him. He said, I'd give it up again. I'd let my golf game suffer again if it meant we could win. Glass. Another.
the three. I'll tell you, their answer is the 2-3 zone. The 2-3 zones making them do what they want. Shoot the ball over the top. And Glass and Robinson answer. Made it a 10-point game and a block shot by Glass. Chance to cut it back to single digits with 5.25 to play. Plenty of time left. They can convert right here. Nice cross-court pass, and Glass gets it in low. <laughs> Macklin got it back. Was 0 for 2, though, in close. Ooh! Ooh, they wanted a foul. He threw him away. I think they missed that one down there on Montross. Block shot as Williams drove the lane. He gets it back, stolen away by Macklin, and a foul on Calabria. I thought Montross cleared out and made contact after that rebound. There's the rebound, and Montross is going to come up with it. Here it is. Freeze it right here now. All right, let's go. Now roll it. Here we go. Oh, there's the little left arm. Just get out of my way. No such thing as a little left arm when you've got Montross. I mean, that's bigger than Holyfield or Redick Bowes. Five minutes left in the game. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale in Chapel Hill, where the number one team in the land has had their hands full tonight against the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Ten-point game. Chance to put it back in single digits in the hands. And at the free throw line is Macklin. He's probably the most celebrated recruit in Western history. He chose Western Kentucky after offers from out of, well, Louisville, Indiana. I mean, this kid could play. He's a nephew of former LSU and NBA player, Woody Macklin. Rudy played on the LSU team that went to the Final Four the year that Indiana won it all with Isaiah Thomas. He just put the knockout punch on Bill Lampier as the ball in. Get it in deep like that, it's over. It's an M&M'er, it's a mismatch, it's an NC, no contest. It's Cindy Crawford against Roseanne Arnold, baby, oh, in a beauty contest. Brother, it's also 89-79, to 79, and Phelps almost came up with a steal. Horn on the drive. Kicks it back out as he went against two seven-footers. Basket goes by Hall. Look at that emotion on that sideline. What emotion they have, the Western Kentucky kids. Something special happens when players play with emotion, and you play with feeling, and you play with some love, and some real, real great attitude. And that's what the Ralph Willard kids do, and that's a reflection on Willard. He's won 61 games in his three years. Drives the pass inside. What a tough cookie this number 21 is, Mr. Horn. And there's the kick off the glass. Hall gets the conversion. And Phelps fouls out. Not a normal Derek Phelps night, that's for sure. Two no, points, not. four assists. No, I didn't play well. Was in foul trouble early. They even played Donald Williams at some point guard slot. McGinnis got in foul trouble as well. So Derek leaves. 6'4 senior. Only two points and four assists tonight. With 4.34 to go, he is gone. Second player to have fouled out as Sipa's Bunton left at the 10.21 mark for Western Kentucky. The thing that impresses me the most about Western Kentucky, they just don't back down. They nope. just keep coming at you, coming at you. Darius Hall, we talked about free throws. He drains that one and makes it a seven-point game. They go a little too free. They're looking to take you to a trapping area. There's the turnover. They forced the turnover. Now they got to think about the three. Now they have to think about trying to get a three. Spot a guy up that can shoot the three. Someone like Horn. Fraley can shoot it as well. Unranked Western Kentucky. Right with number one North Carolina. Seven point game. Four minutes to play. Dribble penetration. Look to drive it in. Horn likes to penetrate with the ball. Here he is against Williams. Has a little screen for him. Trying to get a little two-man action. He's going to kick it out. Oh, there's the triple team. Loose ball comes off the glass. And then Montross clears it off the glass. I love the way Montross outlets the basketball. Keeps it over his head. The best I've ever seen outlet it was Wes Unsel years ago. The former Louisville All-American. Now coaching in the NBA with the Bullets. Approaching three and a half minutes, 89-82, North Carolina. Williams all alone. Salvadori, nice rebound inside, or did he push off to get that rebound? Nope, they're going to call a foul on Western Kentucky. Donald Williams got to get a little bit more aware of the three-point line, put himself a little bit out of shooting range, shooting it from a little too deep. Darius Hall picks up his fourth foul. Don't forget, we've got... 
Top rank boxing coming up immediately following our ball game, the Cruiserweight Championship. Coming up next, Vincent Boulware and Al Ice Cole. I think they're about 325 away. I think this kind of game, Brad, also really helps Dean Smith. Number one, it makes his players come down a little notch from all the publicity and notoriety. He can send a message loud and clear. People are going to play at another level against us. They're going to play with unbelievable emotion. They're going to play so hard, it's incredible. And we have to come and be ready to play. As we said in the open, when you're number one, you've got a big target on your back. And Western Kentucky somehow trying to find enough arrows to hang in with North Carolina. Salvadori gets the second one. It is an eight-point North Carolina lead, but still a long way to go. 3.25 to play here in Chapel Hill. Western Kentucky has only one win in nine outings against ACC schools. They trail by eight with 3.25 left here in the first round of the NIT from the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale along with you. I think the ACC, again, from top to bottom, will be the best conference in basketball. You look at Maryland, for example, some new good recruits, Johnny Rhodes, and they're picked maybe to be last. Sharon Wright and company down at Clemson could surprise some people. And I think up on top, you got three top ten teams with Carolina, Duke, and Georgia Tech. And watch out for Virginia. There's that 2-3 zone right now. Glass has already hit one. He's got another. He loves that 2-3 zone. He only has two field goals. They're both three-pointers. It is a five-point ball game. Really denying defensively, trying to play good denial on a wing. Little Horn matching up on Williams. Williams trying to take him one-on-one. Foul outside as Williams started his drive. It'll be on Horn. First foul on Darren Horn. We're going to take a look right now. Here's that 2-3 zone right here by Carolina. And we're going to watch them get into this gap area right here. Watch. We're going to watch them get in the gap area. Right in this area here. There's a big hole. Freeze it. Right here. He loves it. Slow reacting. Shoots it over the top. And it's nothing but that. There it is. Good night. Hello. Tickle the twine. Fifth three-pointer of the second half by Western Kentucky after going over in the first half. Williams now 26. As a freshman, he played a little backup point guard. And right now, because of Phelps fouling out and McGinnis getting four fouls, he's jumped into the point guard slot. Donald Williams. And he just matched his career high that he set against Duke last March. 27 points, Donald Williams. Somehow, Western Kentucky, after they leave here, has got to get Jeff Rogers to play at the ability that he's capable of playing to give him some real spark at that point guard spot. And I really believe he will become a solid player after watching him work out. He's jet quick. He's a tremendous scorer as well. Robinson in low to Hall. Oh, he blew a low swing. Yeah, he lost control of the basketball. That really hurts. That could have cut it to five for the Hilltoppers. And now Donald Williams says, let's use some of that 35-second clock. They go to a little one-four set and step up high out of the one-four. A little screening action inside between Montrose and Salvador. They play their own little two-round game. Well, done a little motion. Stackhouse cross courts at Williams. Inside, Montrose counted. He has really learned how to use the right. You know, he turned his ankle. Yeah, Montrose turned his ankle. He used the right and the left hand so effectively. Led his high school Lawrence North to the state championship. Nine point North Carolina lead, under two minutes. Lean in jumper by. Oh, let's see how go. Outlet to Stackhouse. Can't get there. He's had three opportunities in transition, but the outlet pass has just been a little too strong. I'll bet you anything that time he was thinking, I'm not going to try the reverse this time. Let's just get to this thing and put it in. <laughs> exactly. Get in there and just dunk that baby. Montross with that left-handed hook. Injured his ankle, but he's trying to walk it off out there. And so far, he is. It looks like he got a little whiter, a little bit stronger physically. He is low. become quite a celebrity at a big country western concert here and i found this out he went to see clinton black and he went to see him in concert and everybody was driving him nuts for autographs <laughs> now to a minute and a half to play 94 85. 
They like to run a lot of quick two-man games, last games. Missed that three, and Montross clears it. Montross getting every rebound and every missed shot now. And a foul on Glass on the collision with Calabria. Cruiserweight title fight coming up next. That immediately follows our ball game. It's top ranked boxing brings you the IBS, IBF uh, cruiserweight title bout. That's a minute 20 seconds away, so hang around for that. Eric Montreux is going to relace that left shoe. Want he turned a little bit on his move to the hoop. And he is still limping. That'll hurt worse tomorrow morning, probably, than it does right now. And it looks like North Carolina will have to play two nights from now. Coach Smith allows himself a smile with a nine-point lead, 120 left. Calabria leaves the door open a little bit by missing the free throw. Another W. Come on, Coach, give us a smile. Another W, 775. What a career he's had. It's just been incredible. Nine final fours. I mean, 13 times in a row to the sweep 16. And now the Hilltoppers pretty much have to live on the three, as if they haven't been the last four minutes. Robinson will take a two, though, and nails it, and they want a timeout, and they get it. Robinson really has done a great job in the second half. Remember the new rule now, the last one minute, definitely the clock stops after every score. Right now it's stopped with 109 left on a timeout. Been named our Polaroid player of the game. 27 points. 8 of 17 from the field. 9 for 9 from the free throw line. Put on a tremendous show in the second half, and he's got the ball in hand in the backcourt. And his nickname is Boom. Boom, boom, boom. That's what his friends call him, and he's certainly put the boom on Western Kentucky's hopes, it appears, now in this first round NIT game tonight. And Under we, a minute. There's McGinnis with the basketball at the point. The reason they call him Boom, his mom laid it on him in his house when he was a youngster. He'd be upstairs and he'd have a make-believe basketball goal and he'd be trying to shoot jumpers and shoot jumpers and make noise that she finally nicknamed him. She says, you're Boom. And tonight he was Boom, Boom, Boom. He has made a lot of noise tonight, too, and tied his career high, as we said last March, against Duke. He had 27 tonight in the first game of 93. 27 more. Here's McGinnis at the free throw line. That's his fifth point of the night. Now the Carolina fans hanging around to see if they can get the century mark. And they have had to hang around all night just to see if North Carolina could survive this scare. And they will, apparently. 53 seconds left. Western Kentucky's out of timeouts, by the way. And it was a scare. There was no doubt. I mean, this club really got late in the game, down to three, scrapping with them. And they shot 0 for 10 in the first half from three-point range. It would really been interesting. Robinson. That one's off the mark. Not a good shot right there. Really a bad shot. Stackhouse. Foul by Frelix. That's going to do it for Michael. He'll foul out. First, first time I heard about Jerry Stackhouse was from Howard Garfinkel, the high school guru from out of New York. Told me about him when he was a sophomore in high school. And I'll tell you something. He has got quite a future. I don't like those shorts. Look how baggy those shorts are. I mean, those <laughs> shorts. I mean, why do you wear them down at her ankles? Rashid Wallace sets the standard, I think, for baggy shorts. <laughs> you don't mention the great recruits. What a class UCLA has gotten early. I think Jimmy Herrick has put all those people to sleep out in L.A. on the talk shows that were burying them constantly. One guy in particular, Joe McDonald. I mean, this guy was ripping them left and right. And here it is. He said he could recruit. Best class, but followed right by Indiana and Duke. The three of them early have done a tremendous job of recruiting. Horn misses the jumper. Calabria gets the rebound. They got Stackhouse. There's the exclamation point. Oh, no. He gets fouled. Robinson wasn't going to give him a cheapie. Duke beat North Carolina out for a little guard. Oh, Alex Wojciechowski from out of Maryland, who they're excited getting for their program for next season. And Ricky Price, many people say 6'6", six, six, from out of California, who some people say is the best player in California. Kansas has got to be smiling at Rafe LaFrance, a seven-footer from Iowa who just committed to Roy Williams down there, former Far Heel assistant coach. He's done a magnificent job with Kansas. Tell you who's smiling tonight is the fans in North Carolina over this young man, Stackhouse. Got to go back to 28 to find them losing an opener. 
They're not going to lose this one. They are over the 100 mark, 101.87. Losing run at home. Yeah, they lost that one that year, and after 1982 championship team, Stackhouse, does he have time for one more little show? Nope, fouled by Horn. Western Kentucky's not going to give up anything, even though they're going to lose this game. They played very, very well, and had their outside shooting been a little more accurate, uh, Ralph Wheeler might have had himself a major upset. But I think as this, it is, they're down 13. I think, Brad, the synopsis here tonight is Ralph Willard's got himself the making of an outstanding team, number one, with great athletes and quickness. Number two, also North Carolina. Power galore, quickness, tremendous scoring potential, and they're the real deal. I mean, they're going to have a phenomenal year. Here's Serge Swicker coming in for Montrose. Another seven-footer. Montrose leads with 21. Stackhouse is going to end his night with 15 and his opening game in a North Carolina uniform. And North Carolina wins the first game of the NIT preseason matchup 101-87. That's going to do it from Chapel Hill for Dick Vitale and our ESPN crew. Brad Nessler saying so long from North Carolina. Top-ranked boxing in the Cruiserweight Championship is next.